Uh, tell me if you've heard this one before. There's a brand new AAA Lord of the Rings MMORPG in development right now. I'm getting a serious case of deja vu. <laughs> Earlier this week, Amazon Games announced its collaboration with Middle Earth Enterprises to develop a new MMO based on the iconic franchise. The game will take place in the same timeline as J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings book trilogy, featuring all of those well-known locations, stories, and of course characters. This is being developed in-house by Amazon Games Orange County Studio, the same ones who made New World. During the reveal, they said the team is determined to deliver an experience that is incredibly faithful to the rich fantasy lore established by Tolkien's landmark novels, which is exactly what you expect to hear and pretty much what any studio who works with a major IP that isn't one of their own typically does say. Some direct quotes from Amazon Games director Rich Lawrence, who said, the number one thing about a property like this is that you have to be respectful and authentic. When somebody is a fan of the Lord of the Rings and sits down and plays this game for the first time, they have to say, this was crafted by a bunch of people who lived in this world just like I do in my head, and they get it. Later, he added, we understand this world, the people working on this team love these works, we're right there with you, we are fans, and we want to make a game that that we as fans will enjoy. So they've got the green light to make a new Lord of the Rings MMO. They're going to be true to the source material. Got it. What else? Well, the press release went on to clarify that this is the same team who made New World, as we mentioned earlier. The Lord of the Rings MMO, however, will be quite different while also building upon the expertise and learnings from their previous games. Specifically, they said, the Orange County Studio already has several tried and true technical achievements under its belt. New World has substantial new features in development, and that basis plus new innovations will provide a compelling environment to create a virtual Middle Earth experience. So while they are going to be using the things that they've learned while developing and continuing to support New World post-release, they are going to be making it its very own separate thing. So with that in mind, we should not expect this to just be New World plus a Lord of the Rings theme, setting, and skin. He went on to add, for example, New World enabled huge multiplayer battles at a scale which is uncommon in video games due to the sheer complexity of enabling dozens of players to seamlessly interact with in the same instance. This is very true. New World did a pretty good job of ha having th single servers with thousands of players on it without any loading screens as you move between zones and come across those various players. That is something that is not typically common in multiplayer action games. It's 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 really nice to see. This proficiency has a clear application and relevance to Tolkien's Third Age, which famously features large-scale battles of its own. In fact, this game will give the studio a new opportunity to take much of what works so well for New World, revisit it with the benefits of several years' worth of technological advancements, and apply them in a way that's relevant to the Lord of the Rings. To me, frankly, this is actually really exciting, and I do think it has a ton of potential because, yes, Lord of the Rings has all of these set piece moments, these real massive scale battles. And the idea that we could get this in a multiplayer game, I think is really exciting. You know, we've seen this replicated in single player games like the Shadow series, Shadow of War and Shadow of Mordor. And then we've seen it in tab target MMOs, specifically in the Lord of the Rings online. They replicate some of those larger scale moments. But if we could be getting a modern day game that looks as good as New World does with action combat, with a multiplayer that has hundreds or thousands of players on top of potentially hundreds and thousands of enemy NPCs, mate, that would be like mind-blowingly amazing. The idea of having these huge large-scale battles using the tech that they had in New World, but doing it in the Lord of the Rings setting, to someone like me, that sounds pretty potentially awesome. Speaking of Lord of the Rings Online, by the way, if you didn't know, these two games are in no way connected. Like, yes, a Lord of the Rings MMO exists. It's been around for a very long time. Lord of the Rings Online, people still play it and it still even gets regular updates. But this new deal between Middle Earth Enterprises and Amazon is for a completely new, entirely separate game. This isn't Lord of the Rings Online 2. There is no relation between the two titles beyond them sharing the same IP. So a world exists where Lord of the Rings Online will continue doing its own thing, continuing to get development and uh, updates and continue to maintain a player base that it has. 
and Amazon's Lord of the Ring MMO will come out and do its own thing. So long as the Lord of the Rings people don't just yank the rug out from under Lord of the Rings online, like revoking their rights to continue to use the IP. If that doesn't happen, both games can, and as far as we know, currently will exist in tandem. All right, but back to the new game. We learned that Amazon's Lord of the Rings MMO will also be running on an updated version of New World's Azoth Engine, which they said they plan to evolve considerably to deliver something that feels distinct from New World and fitting for the world of Middle Earth. The team has big plans for the next generation of the Azoth engine that will unlock exciting new possibilities for its take on Middle Earth. Now, I would say that we should likely expect the game to have a relatively similar look graphically in terms of things like the lighting, the visual and particle effects, sort of like how a lot of Unreal Engine games have a similar appearance to them. Odds are this Lord of the Rings MMO will have a somewhat similar look to New Worlds, but even more than that, things like the game's performance, its scope, its density of environmental detail, of players, of NPCs, the overall level of detail, a lot of the things will likely be in line, if not hopefully improved, as they've worked on the engine over time. It'll probably be a lot like New World, with many things ideally better than they are in New World. So on the visual side of this, uh, this is super amazing news for me, because I, I would say if nothing else, I absolutely adored the look and presentation of New World. It's terrain, the landscapes, the foliage, the lighting and atmospheric effects, everything about the visual appearance of New World, plus the sound design that they had in the game, all of that came together for a super immersive and engaging play space, like spending time in the world of New World, spending time in that game, going around, seeing and listening. It was such a visual and audio treat. I think they knocked out of the park. Like, I really like uh, the, the look of this game, which comes in tandem with the engine that they're running it on. As for the concerns about them using the same engine, um, well, uh, when New World launched, it was riddled with all sorts of performance and engine related issues. The game, first of all, ran very poorly at launch for a lot of people, myself included. We're talking inconsistent or low FPS, things like stuttering and crashing, which, you know, crashing is about as bad as it gets, right? Well, um, no, because don't forget, this was the game that was outright frying people's graphics cards. During the login screen, the game would be running at like well over a thousand FPS, and that, plus other reasons, ended up overloading and bricking certain graphics cards. At which point, you're screwed. You have to go buy, an, like if your graphics card gets fried, you're done. You gotta go buy a new graphics card. And if you try playing New World again, keep your fingers crossed that it doesn't happen again. It was a real rough situation. Though bear in mind, that is not entirely Amazon's fault. This was a default with the cards themselves. Themselves. It was an issue with the manufacturing of those cards. However, that issue didn't become widespread and well known until the launch of New World. So that certainly says something. There was also weeks and weeks and months and months worth of, worth of glitches and exploits. Item and gold duping using lag switches, basically how the game managed the server to client authentication. People were able to dupe millions of gold and items, which subsequently tanked the economy. There was the window drag glitch. That sounds stupid. How bad could that possibly? Window dragging? Whatever. Well, well, no. While playing the game in windowed mode, it allowed you at any time to click and drag the game around your screen. Okay, what's the big deal? Well, doing so made your character invulnerable to damage. You were completely invincible. You could not die because while the screen was being dragged around, the game would not register any incoming damage. This was totally busted and broken in PvP when you consider things like trying to cap points. If you're standing on a point and you're invincible, uh, <laughs> it makes it hard to take it back, you know what I'm saying? Players were able to link various types of HTML code in chat that ended up posting massive images that would completely cover the entire screen of anyone else on the server. Even worse though, they eventually found a particular line of code that when moused over, either purposefully or accidentally, it would force crash other players' games. There was the crouch healing bugs, which would make players invulnerable in PvP once again. There were terrain glitches that let people uh, climb over invisible walls, which resulted in things like getting into outpost rush modes before the game even started. There were infinite damage glitches for a few weapons. Specifically, I remember the hatchet. The list goes on and on and on. Just tons of issues and loopholes uh, tied to how the game was developed and coded using the Azoth engine. Now, to my knowledge, a majority of these 
these since have been resolved, but some do still linger. Even just doing a quick uh, cursory YouTube search for like new world bugs, glitches, or exploits displays videos as recently as like a month or two ago with new ones that have been cropping up. It really seems like every time or every so often when Amazon releases a patch, um, they might fix some issues, but then a whole new ones appear. So, so yes, while I am happy on one hand that they're using the same engine because of the visual appearance and the audio and everything that the engine can produce in terms of like an immersive world. On the other hand, I really hope and they really have to nail down any underlying issues that plagued New World's release because no doubt if they actually finish this game and release it, a Lord of the Rings MMO will be massive. It will almost certainly be even bigger than New World was because it's a Lord of the Rings IP, it's a AAA game, and it's almost certainly going to visually look really good. That is going to draw a lot of people. All those people mean all those extra chances and all the likelihood that any issues, however small percentage of people they might affect, they're going to crop up, we're going to hear about them, and they're going to become uh, fairly widespread. At least people are going to really know about it and they're going to hear about it. So I hope they fix any major issues because there's probably going to be a lot of people playing this game if it makes it to completion. We actually have a bunch of new other details about the game thanks to a follow-up to the original announcement. These highlights include that the game will take place in a large persistent world. All right, unsurprising. I would love if they managed to make it completely open world and seamless like New World is. The fact that you can just run from the bottom of the play space all the way to the top without hitting a single loading screen, that is amazing. It does a great job of creating world immersion and I hope they can do that. Like in Middle Earth, a seamless game in Middle Earth would be dope as hell, especially if they manage to fill out the whole space. We know that the game is being developed for both PC and console. This isn't terribly surprising. If anything, I'm actually surprised the new world isn't on console yet because it's perfectly fitting with the low number of skills, with the basic action combat. It could certainly play very well on a controller. It probably should be on consoles. Um, also, I would probably expect action over tab target, especially if they're uh, building on the basis of what they did with new world. And that the game is in early, the early stages of production. Very likely this probably means pre-production in turn, this means this is yet another MMO to add to the list that is probably four to five years away, most likely. Now, I mentioned at the top having a serious case of deja vu with this story. Well, that's because this isn't the first Lord of the Rings MMO that's been announced to be in development by Amazon. This is the second in the past four years, yes, back in the summer of 2019, Amazon came out to announce that they had entered into an agreement to develop an MMO based on the Lord of the Rings franchise. Sounds like something we just talked about. During the reveal, they said that they had a team of industry veterans who were working on the game, who had previously worked on things like World of Warcraft, EverQuest, Rift, Destiny, and Defiance, that the Lord of the Rings MMO would be an engrossing new AAA experience set at a time long before the events of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, exploring lands, people, and creatures never before seen. That is a departure from the one that they're making right now, which is set during the Lord of the Rings trilogy and The Hobbit. After the announcement of this game back in 2019, uh, development seemingly chugged along for the next few years. We saw some things pop up here and there, like job postings that revealed some details about the game's systems and features that were in development. A lot of this was just typical MMO fare. We learned that they were targeting a 2023 release window for the game and that the game was being developed in the Lumberyard engine. So far as we knew, development was just going along until all of a sudden, out of the blue in early 2021, Amazon announced that the game was canceled. Although apparently this was not entirely their choice because in late 2020, the company that they partnered with to make the game, Layu Technologies, got bought out by Tencent. Now, after the buyout, Tencent and Amazon went into contract negotiations for the MMO that was in development. And after failing to come to any agreement, we don't know exactly around what, but they failed to come to an agreement between the two parties. And as a result, development of the game was halted, not halt. It was completely canceled. The game was completely shelved. Now, it would be reasonable for you to assume that that MMO that they had in development from 2019 to 2021 is the same or a continuation of the just re-announced one that they're working on right now. Evidently, that is not the case. According to Amazon, these two are in no way related. Everything that was worked on for those couple of years is in the bin and is not tied to the current game. They directly actually address this in the recent press release by saying, those with long memories may recall that this is not the first time Amazon Games has been involved in plans to build an MMO based on the Lord of the Rings. The first deal, intended as a co-development effort, unfortunately fell through, but after the success of New World, Amazon Games and Middle Earth Enterprises discussed the idea of a new collaboration, agreed that the orange 
Orange County studio is the best fit to deliver an MMO based on the novels and signed a new contract. Or in other words, initially the Lord of the Rings right holders were unsure if Amazon was the right fit to make the game, but after seeing just how well New World did, they went ahead and gave them the green light. And as a reminder, while New World may have fallen off significantly since its peak popularity, it was still in many respects, especially like financially on the business side of things, it was very much so a success. It reached a peak concurrent player count of over 900,000 players. That puts it in the top 10 highest of all time on Steam. Top 10 highest in history, concurrent player counts. It's crazy. Still to this day, they average a roughly daily peak of 20,000 players, which every single day makes it to the top 75 Steam games, top 75 games on the entire platform. And estimates look to put the game having sold somewhere in the vicinity of 15 to 20 million copies. That is a lot of copies. I know a lot of people love to point out the failures of New World, and in a lot of ways it did fail. It certainly failed to live up to its potential and its initial hype and popularity that it had when it first came out. But nevertheless, it was in a lot of ways a success. And I think that's why the Lord of the Rings decided, uh, Lord of the Rings rights holders decided to work with them. Now, ideally, what we want, especially for live service games, for MMOs, we want a game that continues to main pop remain popular, even more so a game that launches and continues to grow and succeed with time. That's not been the case with New World, although it has maintained a player base and a respectable player base. People really shoo on games like because they're not at their peak, but 20,000 concurrent players daily that's a lot of people, and I don't think we should discredit that. It is still a ton of people that are clearly enjoying and getting entertainment out of this game on a regular basis, on a daily basis. Just because it's not in the top five or the top 10 games on Steam daily doesn't mean it's not still a big, popular, and relatively successful game. It's just not as big, not as popular, and not as successful as it could have been, and a lot of that is due to all of the issues they had at launch, to the content issues, and to the issues that failed to uh, have people interested in staying around for the long term, myself included. I enjoyed the game in the beta, I enjoyed my time with it at launch, but then I really have little to no desire to go back, at least uh, as of this moment. Maybe that changes in the future. Either way, yes, the game did well enough that Middle Earth Enterprises have decided that they're a good fit now, and they will be making this next-gen Lord of the Rings MMO, of which Amazon Games Vice President Christoph Hartman said, we're honored and flattered by the their faith in us, and we're determined to build the best possible Lord of the Rings MMO, and something that the franchise's millions of fans all over the world will truly love. Now, Hartman also spoke with IGN and they talked about the fact, just reiterating that these two games are very much different. They're not the same thing. They're not taking the work that they did over those two years and carrying it into this game. We do know that they're in completely different timelines with the prior game being way before the Lord of the Rings trilogy and this new game being set in that time period with all of those characters, those locations, and those stories. And that is something to keep in mind. You know, the, the big things that we know from that mainline series that is where that's the play space we're going to be in. That's the world we're going to be in. That's the characters we're going to be interacting with. There is a ton of potential. I know Lord of the Rings Online is still a game that goes along and it does have a fan base, but it looks and feels so dated. And I think it's a real hard sell to get new people to jump in a game that looks and plays like that. For all the things they've done right, and by all accounts, they've done a lot of things right with Lord of the Rings Online. It is a really great game when it comes to delivering like an authentic Lord of the Rings experience. People who are just looking for that really love it. But in a modern day gameplay experience in a visual and world immersion experience i just think it's lacking behind in a lot of ways anyways it does none of that really matters lord of the rings online aside a brand new triple a game modern visuals modern gameplay modern design I would love to see that in the Lord of the Rings setting, and I hope Amazon can do it. I know people don't have a lot of faith in Amazon. I know in a lot of ways they have faltered, but I do think there's a lot of potential uh, regardless. And whoever really, I mean, whoever would make a modern day Lord of the Rings MMO, I would be interested in seeing just out of pure curiosity. And we'll see if Amazon can deliver. They got really close with New World. I mean, that like it is crazy how popular that game was when it first came out we'll see if they can supersede that here this time around and actually deliver something that keeps a lot of people engaged for a very long time but that's gonna do it for me today thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed the vid and uh yeah i'm looking forward to seeing and hearing more although this is again four to five years down the road most likely so keep, just keep that in mind <laughs> we'll be I, i'll still be here i'll still be here you know knock on wood uh if i'm still around on this planet I'll probably still be here making videos and uh, talking games with you guys. But yeah, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Take it easy.